So thank you and good afternoon, friends. It's so delightful to see such strong participation of uh, young leaders and adolescents in this conversation and be reminded that together they bring to this table the voice, energy, aspirations and determination of 1.2 billion adolescents around the globe. And as Flavia reminded us, nothing, without, nothing about us without us. So one of the great things about young people is that they do question and they do care deeply about justice and they have open minds. And my appeal is to those young and open minds to really take charge of their health and well-being. Because as Aristotle said, good habits formed at youth make all the difference. And my interaction with you this afternoon is really going to focus on a challenge which is looming large, a threat that is growing by the day, a threat of non-communicable diseases, and in particular, uh, cervical cancer. And therefore, it is a call to all adolescents of the world to use their power to protect themselves in time against these catastrophic diseases. Because if you act now, in advance, before these diseases hit you, that's guarantee for a healthy and secure uh, future. And why do I say that? Because today, ev ev seven out of every 10 deaths are because of non-communicable diseases. And 60% of premature deaths in this category are because of habits and behaviors which start during adolescence. I'm sure you have discussed tobacco, alcohol use, lack of physical activity, nutritional imbalance, and aberrations. And 22% of these deaths are related to cancers. And we all know that the treatment costs for cancers are staggeringly high. I have personally seen thousands and thousands of families in India getting into a vicious poverty trap every year because they just had to sell everything that they possessed in order to get treatment for their family members for cancers, and a lot of times really unsuccessfully. Now cervical cancer is a major killer of women and it is growing. As you can see, cervical cancer related mortality is threatening to overtake maternal deaths. And by 2035, more than 400,000 women are estimated to going to die because of cervical cancer and women having HIV HIV are at a much greater risk of dying because of cervical uh, cancer. What is sad is that cervical cancer kills women in the prime of their youth. So this is Zaina, a poor widow from Tanzania, who really had to sell the only mattress she had in her house to be able to go to a doctor for a diagnosis. And when she learned that she had cervical cancer, she felt utterly helpless because she had no money to treat herself. And sure enough, she died soon, leaving behind four young children. So social and economic costs of cervical cancer-related deaths are very high devastating for families, communities, and countries. And in societies where typically you find a lot of gender discrimination and inequity, women run a 40% higher risk of dying because of cervical cancer. Not surprising that most cervical cancer deaths are really concentrated in low and middle income countries. Why not? Because these societies typically have women suffering from a multitude of deprivations, handicaps, and discrimination. And these are also countries where health systems and health system investments are not necessarily robust or high, and in particular, uh, facilities for 
for early screening and detection of cervical cancer are weak. And as I said, treatment costs are prohibitive and, and at times, and most of the times actually futile because cervical cancer is detected at such an advanced stage. But there is a medical breakthrough. We now have a vaccine which is highly effective and it can actually prevent cervical cancers very, very efficaciously. But what about the price of the vaccine? So when we started out, HPV vaccine had a, had a price so high that poor families in poor countries could not afford it. And that is where Gavi's role becomes extremely important because Gavi supports 73 countries. These are low-income countries, but they have 60% of the global birth cohort. And then we smartly aggregate and pool demand from these countries and really leverage those volumes and economies of scale to create a win-win situation for vaccine manufacturers who now have a predictable long-term demand and procurement systems, you know, through UNICEF, which, which are smooth, which are hassle-free, which are transparent, and at the same time, we, we have countries on board because the kind of prices that Gavi secures are incredibly low. And here you can see for, for HPV Gavi prices, four and a half dollars, incredible, compared to hundred dollars, in fact, more in, in most developed markets. So we think that HPV vaccine is a huge opportunity. And as I said in the beginning, this is where prevention makes sense because you can see this is 15 years onwards that you typically see HPV infections and the onset of cervical cancer. But if you really act in time and act in advance, you know, and the nine to 14 years of age is that window of opportunity where we can vaccinate girls and actually avert the growing burden of cervical cancer and associated mortality and, and morbidity. We also think that HPV uh, provides an excellent platform for integration, and I'm sure you have discussed a lot about integration, but this is a huge entry point. HPV is typically delivered to school-based uh, campaigns, and, and that's an excellent time to engage with both girls and boys more holistically around issues that are of such great interest and importance to adolescents, be it nutrition or sexual reproductive health, hygiene, including uh, menstrual hygiene, uh, sanitation, and even behavior change, which is going to be so critical for several diseases with epidemic potential like Ebola that we, we saw or, or really uh, Zika. So we at Gavi are committed to accelerating HPV program. Gavi had always historically engaged with pediatric vaccines. So we really took very tentative steps on, on HPV in 2012. And so far we have uh, supported vaccination of one million adolescent girls. And I know Flavia is sitting here who's been a part of Gavi board, but now we have a big ambition on HPV really reaching 40 million girls by 2020 and what an, an unprecedented opportunity it is for all of us who are so interested in health and well-being of adolescents. Just one thing, and, and this is really my last slide, uh, we really believe in creating impact, magnifying and amplifying impact through purposeful partnerships. Gavi is an alliance and we are a very unique uh, partnership. We work with multilateral institutions like WHO or UNICEF, which are our core implementing uh, partners. We have sovereign donors who actually make generous contributions to Gavi. Canada is one of them. They have made Gavi into a 10 billion enterprise, but more importantly, we have implementing countries as partners in progress because they demonstrate exemplary leadership in taking these vaccines to, to children and, and, and girls. And they also put on the table some money uh, by way of co-financing of vaccines. So on top of 10 billion during the period 2016 to 2020, countries would actually be putting an additional $1 billion as their 
contribution to, to, to Gavi mission. But you, we are also constantly and aggressively creating space for new partners. And I was listening to Girl Effect, you know, explaining the innovative approaches that they have to engage with adolescents. And Girl Effect is a new partner that we have on board on HPV program. We also want to really create disruptive innovations because we think that's what is going to make us leapfrog. So we really work on sort of figuring out how we can use drones to take vaccines in those hard to reach, remote, far flung geographies, because leaving no one behind is everybody's aspiration in SDGs. We work on, on innovating around cold chain equipments, solar powered, so that lack of electricity is no longer a barrier in taking cold chain and vaccines to, to forgotten, excluded uh, populations. We are working aggressively on leveraging new technologies on collecting real-time information and data disaggregated, as was said, more from the point of view of targeting our investment and resources at vulnerable, marginalized, disadvantaged, forgotten, mute, silent populations. So really, to end, there is an African saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's what we believe in going far. And we are very excited about this new partnership with adolescents on our HPV program. Thank you.